Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 135. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building. Ladies returning in the building. It was just on recently. Reintroduce yourselves to the audience. You want to go first, Britt? Or? Okay. Go ahead. You can go. Uh. I am. Um, we, we, also, we also modest and professional. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> That's how that's how hill sisters behave. But anyway, um, <laughs> my name is Taya Moore. I am the owner of Just Taya Bread LLC. I'm an author of a Fresh Cappuccino Sugar. I also have a um, self care journal called Self Kids Bay. Podcast producer, social media manager, and songwriter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, oh, yes, yes. and as of tomorrow. T-shirt creator, that part. Copy Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Yes, yes. I am um, Brittany once again, and I'm, I'm the founder of Empower Women Fitness and Wellness Center. I'm Empower Women all over the world. Um, I'm actually also a co-host of um, a podcast called Tribe Talk Tuesdays, um, which basically touches the basis of healing and what does it look like for you. And um, I'm a health and wellness coach, and um, I'm a nurse by trade. But um, yeah, that's me, y'all. So, hi. All right, <laughs> All right. So been, listen, doing been, the damn thing. I'm I'm here if, for it. If you've yes. been listening to these recent episodes, Britt was on episode 131. Ty was on episode 133. So 135 is kind of a synergy thing we have going here. Um, first of all, Britt, I messed up. Sound like them. Wait, Sam. I know. <laughs> all right. Um, now, uh, two of these these two episodes, uh that I did with these two young ladies, they kind of touched on a lot of the same things. So Taya hit me and said, that girl that you had on the other day, I want to <laughs> get her on because my book, lean a little bit to the left so the people, I mean, lean a little to the right so the people can see the book. There you go. My book had a lot to do with the things that she was talking about. So, you know, me being the creative mind that I am, I straight plagiarized this from Taya. So this is how we got to episode 135. <laughs> <Now>. <laughs> Hey, listen, it ain't plagiarizing. That's what I wanted you to do, but we got I tell it. people that, though, if I if I flat out steal your idea, I will give you credit as I steal your idea. It's like the girls who do my it homework. Up. I would always big them up for doing my homework. I'm not going to act like I did it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this is what we're going to talk about this week on the episode is healing in the next relationship. This is both of y'all had talked about these different situations where I had a previous, I had a relationship where I felt as though Britt's thing was I felt like somebody walked away with all my stuff. And <laughs> Ty's was she had the abandonment issues. So now once we recognize that somebody walked away with my stuff and I've been abandoned and all of those different things that goes in those relationships, what do you do in the next relationship? The relationship now, because these were different relationships because Ty's was about her father and Britt's was about a relationship like a male-female type relationship. So even in those different dynamics of the relationship, how do we now transition into the new relationship, recognizing that 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 was the problem, and this is what I'm gonna do to make this not bring my old problems into my new situation? Taya, we gonna start with you. Ooh, they gonna start with me. You look <laughs> eager. <laughs> um, you know, I think that we both have done what is necessary to even get into another relationship, which is recognizing that you have to heal, get into the root of that, like you mentioned, abandonment issues, which I do not have anymore. Um, honestly, I don't. Like, I, it's, be been it's been tested out so many times, and I'm pretty confident in saying I don't have abandonment issues anymore. Um, like to hear the things have been, we like to hear the things have been moved on and those are in the past, so let's not gloss over that. Let's salute that, and then go ahead and continue on. <laughs> All right, I'm a woman over 40. You made me lose my train of thought when you stopped me. Oh. <laughs> but no, no, no. You know, I, I always say to people, like, heal before you deal. Because the one thing you don't ever want to do is take um, 
things from the past and, and project that on to someone who has not done anything to you. And a lot of that is happening. So for me, when I kept getting in situations um, that were very similar, I'm like, why does this keep happening? So I had to stop, do the T process. And like, you know what? At the root of this is insecurities. At the root of this is abandonment issues. So once you can acknowledge that and free yourself from that, you might begin to start to have better relationships with men. And at the end of that, what I found out that is that um, a lot I was a lot of the people I was dealing with, I was dealing with because of the abandonment issues or because of the insecurities. Like, oh well, you know, he I, I know I'm kind of big and he likes me going big, so I should just be grateful that he likes me, even though he ain't doing X, Y, and Z. And that's why it's important to free yourself from insecurity. Because once you do, it's like I don't care if I'm big or not, I, I still deserve what I deserve. So it was very important to heal in order to have a quality relationship and more importantly to be a quality partner to someone else. That's the that's the important joint right there. Mm -hmm. Strong evaluations of self is one of them joints I always say. Thanks. You got to make the right, assess right assessment of yourself in the mirror. I can't look in the mirror and tell you I'm 173 pounds of lean muscle. That's not the truth. That's cap. You know what I'm saying? But I can't be telling myself that if that's what I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> Britt? Unmute yourself, Britt. Damn, I am. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just so used to it. Um, but yeah, so um, I definitely agree everything. Um, that she said, and um, and it you, and you hit it on the nose, like that self evaluation of self. Um, I think that's something that I had to like constantly do, and I'm constantly doing it, even to this day. Even though I'm not even in like any relationship, any courtship, or anything, um, uh, it's still having that self evaluation because, um, it's hard because I was married for so long. You know what I'm saying? So like so long, and then it's like. I've been married. I've been. I'm, I'm just still. It, it's when I say knowing self is so important. Like I stress that all the time. Like knowing you as an individual, know what you like, know what you don't like, setting boundaries for self, and constantly like just working on some of those. Um, I'm gonna say like character, um, building blocks that need to be. Um, maybe like chiseled, right? Um, constantly focusing on those and working on those because I know for me, like you might not have abandonment issues, but um, enough issues is like something that I realized the other day when I did my affirmations that still plays a part on me. Like when I say like growing up, it was like nothing was ever, like that was how my father was. Like a B, and I, it's crazy, I was in the shower, like you still stuck on this like a b was never good enough i was like oh you could have got a b plus if i got an a you could have got a girl on a road you need to be on this thing i was like nothing was ever ever good enough and i guess it's like a double in sword where it's, it's like okay cool yeah that kind of always makes me think like all right you got to do more but at the same time it's like where is the acceptance of where you're at if you don't already reach that more Where's the line of satisfactory? Because so, you will always move the goalpost yeah. on yourself if you do that to yourself. Exactly. Oh my god! Like, exactly. So Listen. it's like you know that I'm telling you. So just knowing you and knowing self, like and and being true to self, because that's another thing too. Like I think people when they say, "Oh yeah, I know myself," but being true. If I know that I I don't I don't like this or I don't do this, then why am I settling for this because of you? I'm. That's one thing. I'm, I'm like, what? hold up. You froze up for a second there, Britt. Give us that again. Can you hear me now? There you go. Come on. Give me that again. Okay. Um, I forget. I know. So why would you, you said you, you said you said, oh, okay. See, again, I pay attention when you, when you're talking, Thank you. you were saying <laughs> that, uh, when oh, you're yes. trying oh, to, I... damn, she, go ahead, go ahead. You jumped, you got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when you're trying, yeah. So when you're trying to, um, it's like with outside of knowing self, but just being true to self, because we can say all the time, like, like I said, like I know this, I know I don't like this, I know I like this, but like that same where it's like, oh, I'm just being quiet to keep the peace. No, you need to be able to be able to say what you need to say. So being true to self, like I can't, I'm not gonna settle for something because of who you are. You get what I'm saying? Or if it's my mom, if it's my daughter. 
or if it's whoever, my significant other, I'm not going to settle. So I need to be true to me and stay true to what my boundaries are, stay true to what I said that I, who I am, you know what I'm saying? And what I'm going to tolerate and what I'm not going to tolerate. And I just think that sometimes people are not true to self, which is a problem. What you just, what you touching on right there is once you have a situation and you learn from the situation, you got to learn from it to recognize that something was wrong there or something needs to be worked on there. Everything can't always be the other person's fault. Like, no. if you're the common denominator in all these relationships, if I'm talking to Britt and me and Britt arguing because I keep talking over her, and then me and Ty are doing the same thing, the common denominator is me. It's not everybody else all the time. <laughs> like, so. Well, boy. even in that case, sometimes it's just that you keep picking people that talk over mm -hmm. you. It don't, it don't necessarily. Because it ain't me. Because right. I ain't the problem. <laughs> I ain't, right. going, I ain't taking it on. I ain't the problem. But you copy. Know? But you got to recognize. But that's, that's part of the healing. The healing that's, process will let that's you know a, if you are the problem or not. That's, a, right? that's yeah. again, though, that's recognizing, you like, that's again yeah. recognizing the situation and saying, like, though, that I keep doing the same thing, yeah. picking the right. same person, whether mm. she be light skin, short, dark skin, tall, like, all of those, you choosing the same characteristics in this person is like, Something right. in you has to recognize that that's what's going on. That's the self evaluation. Right. That's the honest right. look at right. the mirror. Mm -hmm. Then once you get to that point, like Britt just said, you got to set these boundaries and really mean them. You can't mm -hmm. say you're looking for a church girl in the club. You can't mm -hmm. look for a girl who's covered at the bar. Like this, mm -hmm. these two things yeah. don't like these two things usually don't equate. You know the way 2024 is. Everything's everything these days, but. You gotta say yeah, it has gotta make sense. Yeah, but exactly. you gotta you gotta also know what you're looking for. I remember I had a conversation with my man who didn't have a girl or nothing at the time, and I'm like, Well, what are you looking for, bro? He like, I know what I'm looking for. I said, What? He like, I know what I'm looking for. What are you looking for? Give me at least one thing. Like, do you want her to be what? You gotta give me a characteristic or something. Like, I can't we can't have a conversation and lean into no directions if we don't have no type of guidance and no type of plan with this situation. That's right. why it's another thing, you know, let's tie it all back into tie your situation. Just your self-care of you know what I mean? you gotta take care of yourself in that situation before you get into another one. Did like Britt just said I was in a marriage for a long time. What you don't want to be is like I'm so used to being in a relationship that I have to be in a relationship. I'm so used to being with sleeping with somebody that I have to sleep with somebody. I ain't even like him or her. But I just got to have a warm body next to you. Like, no, you can't just do that. That's how you end up with bad, bad situations. Yeah. Well, that was for that's part of the mind is the opposite. It's like, go ahead now, talk. Go ahead. Mind was the opposite. It was like, I don't even know how to, like, I grew out on how to date. I don't, I don't, I, that was my thing. I was like, I don't know. You want to do what? You want to, like, <laughs> Like I was the, the I, like I was I'm telling you it was like weird like you know I mean somebody staring it's so far I seen this clip not to catch you up but the, the, it was like this pastor he was like you know you you say you looking for a husband you want a husband you like girl why is man looking at me and that would be me like why are they staring at me like what's wrong with this bull like what is he looking at not subconsciously like he probably was interested and you like like what is wrong with him and I and even to this day I'm still that way because it's like I'm not I'm not used to that but. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, that's a form of self-sabotage, which I was the queen of. I've been on this long process of moving that crown of queen of self-sabotage. Like, mm. literally. It's when you talk yourself out of something or you relate a situation back to something else that don't have nothing to do with it because, you know, because that happened over there. This is going to happen again. So I'm like Mortal Kombat. Get over here mentally. Whenever something happened, like, all right, we sabotaging right now, or this is this just not what it's supposed mm -hmm. to be? Like, I literally mm -hmm. have to stop and have that conversation to make sure that I'm on point. I live by the quote from uh, Remember the Titans. Did your blockers fumble the football, or did you fumble the football? Right? Because the quarterback mm -hmm. fumbled the football, but he was like, well, my blockers, my blockers. If you always blame the blockers, you're going to keep fumbling. So that's how I look at it. Like, it's always going to be me. Even if it's not. So even if it's that I keep getting with people that mean me no good. Yeah, they're bad people because they mean me no good. But if I can't recognize that they're bad people and say, you know, what, I got to stop getting involved with people like that. That's on me. I'm fumbling, mm -hmm. not them. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I agree. Again, I like it. 
That's the to the, again. It's the evaluation. You got to evaluate your situation. You got to step outside of your situation mm -hmm. and try to. This is one thing I always do with my wife is whenever we have like because we don't have no arguments. We didn't probably have three arguments in eighteen years. Uh, we'll have disagreements like you know everybody got. I wanted Chinese food and you came in here with pizza, but um, yeah. I always try to look at stuff from what is she hearing or what am I saying? How am I saying it? Like. Because I, it can't always be her, or it can't always be me. Mm -hmm. But it's like if you try to stop trying to always be the victim, and you know, look at it from the other person's perspective, or try to hear what they're hearing. This is why I'll have different conversations with my aunts or uh, just people I know that's in real relationships, and say, without giving you, this is what's going on in my situation. How do you handle this? Or what do you hear when this happens? Or how did you feel about this type of thing? So that you can improve yourself in these situations. Again, it goes to your self care situations, you know, available right now on Amazon. Um, <laughs> self care is back. Um, but you gotta, be like, you gotta be like evaluating your situation. You gotta always be working on you. You can't ever think that you're a finished product. You can be 78 and still working on your situation. Every day you wake up, you're working on you. Every time, just like you said, you, you should, was in the shower. You and you, should be. <laughs> you should be. Sorry, this, you should be. Some yes. Is for, this, some is like, forty-eight listening to this, and he ain't never. He was in ice since high school. <laughs> like, but just like Britt said, wait. Britt said she was in the shower and she realized, you know, um, something that she was doing. That's what I mean. Like when you're self-aware, it's constant. It's never. That was the whole point of a fresh cup of tea no sugar. You can brew as many times as you would make a cup of tea. The healing process is inevitable. You always want to unlock something that you thought you was over. And then it could be something as small as a post or a comment somebody make and you're triggered by it. And it's like, damn, I ain't healed from that because that shouldn't have bothered me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I try to always get myself so away from triggers because triggers is a bad joint. Anything that can switch my whole mood, vision, like anything that can switch me in a flip of a second is not something I need to be around. It's not something I can allow to control my my everyday. <laughs> but you got so to figure that out. And I, I was about to say that. Say that, that. It, say that again for the people in the back. You got to be triggered to figure that out. If you don't get triggered by something, that's that's the only way you'll know if you actually get healed from it, if it don't bother you. Exactly. you know, like exactly. I said, I had insecurities, right? So when I had insecurities about weight or whatever, and somebody would say something like, oh, I don't like thick girls or this and this and that, I'm taking it personally. It'll hurt my feelings because essentially that person is saying, I ain't good enough because I'm thick, right? But now somebody said that, but, oh, he's just not for me. Somebody like it. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's I mean, the difference I've been, between I've been fat since not. before Tupac. I've been fat since before Tupac got killed. So I, you gotta I always it. understand that um, you're not for everybody. Whether it be your personality, your attitude, your size, you could be too short, too tall, too whatever for anybody. Once you get to this, like once you get to a certain stage of like, I don't give a like because I can't base my life off the decisions that you're making. I can't base my life right. off the parameters that you're setting for yourself. If that's how you feel, that's cool. I'm just not for you. But there's 9,000 other people that you're for. <laughs> like, right. Go ahead, Britt. You was trying to jump in with something before we switch it up. No, no, no. I was, I was, going, I was just agreeing with uh, the triggers. Like, your triggers, you, you, you know, triggers don't necessarily might not change your mood. But those triggers, I know for me, like you said, like, it just, it, it sends, like, it's kind of like, you know how, like, your gas light might come on to let you know that you need gas. That's what triggers are like for me. Like, a trigger like and that's and, and it doesn't necessarily switch my mood but it lets me know like oh you like you know like she said like you need you still need more, you got more work to do or um why are you even feeling this way like you know what i'm saying like why did this even feel some type of way where you say you just got to self-evaluate because self self-evaluate self-evaluate um because everything has a root you know what i'm saying like everything has a root you know what i'm saying quick story like um I think like a couple of weeks ago, me and my daughter was talking and she was, she's, she's, she had called me a liar, right? She was like, you know, that's, that's, uh, no, she called me a hypocrite. So we, and I'm like, words are important. For one of these. I know, I know. <laughs> she was like, hey, mom, that you're, no, you're a hypocrite. And I'm like, that's not what that means. You get what I'm saying? So we had like a whole 45 minute conversation on definition, right? And then I was like, explaining to her why I was so upset 
because she was going off of like linguistically like english terms and i'm going off of like islamic terms you know right and it's just like Mm -hmm. linguistically but linguistically you know what i'm saying or english definition it was like okay i'm saying something or projecting you know i mean something and i'm not doing that and again i'm saying so yeah i get what you're saying but that is not how i'm receiving it you get what i'm saying and i'm saying all of that to say that it triggered me because i had to sit back and look like in my not to say like to her, but in my own personal, like, all right, well, you keep talking about goals and this and this and that with her, like, but you didn't do so. So I had to really sit back and like pay attention to myself, like, well, dang, like you got angry because number one, because you think you know, Islamically, but at the same time, linguistically, are you a Brit? Are you a hypocrite? You know what I'm saying? So I had to really sit back and you like to listen to the messenger, not the messenger. Yeah, because I'm like, no, and it's not even about the messenger because we have these we 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 piggyback all these time, and she's very expressive. So I don't mind. I can take you could, to me. I feel like you could take knowledge from a two, you know, baby, whatever. But it was like it just Absolutely. hit me. I was like, I'm like, wait a minute. So I'm saying that to say like, it just goes back to that self-reflection, self-evaluation, because I'm always in a state of trying to just be better. I'm trying to, you know what I mean, trying to grow, trying to figure out, like, what's the next phase? Because, like you said, it's never a not, you're never going to stop healing, you know what I'm saying, or this process. It's like the the butterfly, you know, that that whole stage, like that caterpillar, then you in the cocoon, then you a butterfly. Then after you get out the butterfly, you're going back into being a caterpillar, back into the cocoon stage, where it's just like this cycle, and that, to me, that's the cycle of healing. All right, like, what phase am I in? Like, oh, my God, am I in the cocoon? Like, right now? Like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? One of, like, one of the things that you just said, my oldest daughter, the last time I had her on the podcast, we had a conversation. And something that she said to me made me go, okay, it's time to change the format for the show. And she's 11. So, like, mm. like you just said, you always can... You can always get things from people. You can't always look at the messenger. You got to listen to the message. But again, that's mm-hmm. being, you know, self that's self evaluating, not looking at these things personally. That's looking at these things like don't get caught up in who's saying it, get caught up into what they're saying. And is it exactly. something good here? Now, time to do a little bit of the get to know segment. Y'all know get to know is sponsored by Custom Hustle at Custom Hustle World on Instagram's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Today we have on the CH fours right there, as you can see. You know what I'm saying? However, you need those joints. Any any si- uh, sizes? I think we're going up to like a thirteen. I'm not exactly sure offhand, which I should know. But um, yeah, available in any color. You tell me what you need, what you want, and we can make all of that happen. CH fours available. CH twos, threes, ones. We got them all over there. Custom jackets, jerseys, uh, sweatsuits. We got a whole bunch of new stuff, lady stuff. We're trying to get developed. We're working on some stuff for the ladies. I'm saying if I get it together, though, I will let y'all know. You know, make announcements until they're ready to be announced. And the CH5s are on deck. Those will be out in a couple of weeks. So, you know, stay tuned. Now, ladies, we're going to go with Britt first on this one since we went to Taya first on the last one. You're happiest when what? I'm happiest when uh, I'm happy every day. I ain't gonna, I don't, so I don't know how to really kind of like do that. But the most time I feel joy is when I'm in service to others. Um, when I when I'm in service to others, my cup is full. I'm happy every day. You know what I mean? I'm happy every day. But the most time, like my most moments of happiness is when I'm in service to others. Copy that. We're going to put a pin into the service of others. We'll pull that <laughs> in a few seconds. We call it a tease in the business. <laughs> Tanya, your happiest when? I'm happy is when I'm creating something. Because when I'm creating something, I'm doing it for a specific reason. <clears throat> to give a message in a creative way. I mean, the more ways I can share my journey or testimony, the better. So I'm happiest when I'm creating something. That's one of my joints. Like, you know, my work and all of that different stuff is when you see like it ain't nothing there and then you put it there. Or you see what is there and then you take all that down and put something totally different there. Like, that's how I, I love all that type of shit. Um, mm. Now, your go-to dish is what? I'm cooking. My go-to dish? Make, yeah, your go-to uh. dish. I got to cook something up real quick. And what is that going to be? 
Bait I'm about to say, Britt looks like she's having steamed water because the face that she did. Dude, ain't no steamed water. I yeah. would say, like, <laughs> fruit Bait salad. Ziti. All right, you said baked <laughs> ziti and you said fruit salad. We gonna eat before we get to Brits is what she just told us. All right, I'm have those corn springs in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead though. You said your fruit salad. Yeah, because I, I it varies for me. You know, I don't have a go to dish. Like I don't have like that one two that's like quick. Um, because I'm just I I so the way I cook for myself is not how I cook for my daughter. So she, she might be like, "Mama, I want a steak and potatoes and broccoli one night." I'm like, "All right, cool." I'm having zucchini noodles with mushrooms and sauteed vegetables with our fruit salad. Like, so I don't have a go-to meal. I just cook. I'm sorry. So, so y'all would have to make that. requests. Y'all would have to make requests before y'all come over. <laughs> Copy that. Um, I like my fruit salad with a lot of uh, strawberries. <laughs> now, <laughs> if I had to make one phone call, who would it be? I mean, whatever the situation is, but I only get one phone call. Who you call? Tyler, you go mm -hmm. first on this one. Mm. Uh -oh. Either my best friend, one of my one of my two best friends. Britt, who we calling? Mm. So it used to be my father. So oh, I'm so irked with you right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yes, it used to be my father. Um, so now it would be. I would have to say my daughter. Um, yeah, I would have to say my daughter. I mean, I have like you know what I'm saying. Um, like Gil, I, well, I can say Gil, but outside my daughter, it would be Gil. I can say that he's like a brother to mine. But it used to be my father. So I just got. I probably even though I've been married eight years this year. Hey, boo. Um, my cousin would have always been the call because even if it was like. You never know if this drone might have been bad or whatever this call might be, but I know he gonna relay the message to her. But um, now you know niggas don't answer the phone, so um, I'm gonna have to call her. Uh, mm -hmm. all right. So now we have to get to know segment. Get to know is sponsored by H2H Cleaning. That is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. We're doing roof and plumbing, flooring, HVAC cleanups, cleanouts, remodeling. You need a little removal or something? We can make all of that happen. Upholstery work. How do you need it? We're hustling it over there. At H2H Cleaning. Big jobs, small jobs, just tell us how we can help. Now, the, both of you ladies, after the show, the last time y'all were on and we did get to know you, then put me on some things that you did not let the audience know that they needed to know. So, <laughs> Taya, since you leaned in first. Uh, <laughs> since you're coming at me, I got I something. Okay, this was a double shot barrel, okay? Omar style. <laughs> mm, you liked that, didn't you? Okay, <laughs> this was coming at both of y'all. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let us know what do we need to know before we wrap up episode 135, ladies. And Britt, don't forget, I still got that pen in, in you uh, that we're going to pull when we get to you. I'm cranking up. Well, I mean, I started off the episode with that just so I ain't forget this time so you wouldn't have to say that. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, the only thing you need to know is to follow my Instagram page. Just type brand LLC. J-U-S-T-T-Y-A-B-R-A-N-D-L-L-C. Everything I do is on there. My link tree app, everything. So anything you want access to about me, my email, everything is all on that page um, in the link let's, in the bio. Let's also take a moment to salute the three-year anniversary of the book. The last time we had you on, it was the week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So Listen. let's salute that and bring that one back to light and let them know where can they purchase the books. I was about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to oh, book. ask on those books. Listen, y'all, it, <laughs> it's a lot going <laughs> on. Um, yeah, I've been celebrating everything this year because I feel like this is the year of discredit. I'm just giving myself my own self a dozen red roses. But anyway, um, my book, A Fresh Cappuccino Sugar, is three years old now. It's on Amazon. I don't have a self kids bay with me. Shame on me. But self kids bay before anything else is two years old now. That's on Amazon as well. It's a six week self care workbook. At the end of it, you're supposed to be able to determine what keeps you from practicing self care and what you need to work on that you at least can dedicate five minutes every day to yourself before you do anything for anybody else. Um, 
one year as a social media manager officially because I've been doing it, but it's the first year I actually get paid for it, you know. So that's the only thing I'm counting. Uh, <laughs> I have two clients that goes towards the pension and all of that. Copy that. <laughs> Here's Philly and uh, Mr. Know It All Podcast, who was actually on episode 130. 130. Yeah, I think he was 130. 130. Um, so yeah, that's what, and uh, as I said earlier, I'm a songwriter. Yes, 130. Too, so. I got a lot of stuff going on, you know. I just, I, I just love to create anything that's creative, and I can give a message at the same time. It's a double. Hold up, one. see, she did it again, and she tried to just gloss over. What? Say I'm that last part again. Oh, and I wrote a song. No, we're not doing that here. This is not the place where we come for modesty. I begin most of I'm my live right. shows by saying. Can I think out? This is a quote from my man, Yo Gotti. Can I think out loud and can I tell myself I'm proud? Okay? Mm, Let's stop like glossing it. over. Huh? Right? I like it. That's what I'm saying. Stop glossing over this. Uh, I wrote this song because you like half told me when you told me. All right? Now you just, oh yeah, and no. Nah. Say well, I mean, this is only a 30 minute time. show, and it's not all about me. Get, so Taya, me and you, Taya, because me and you are here, you can have 33 minutes, okay? No. <laughs> well, the song the song is called What's It Gonna Be? The singer is Michelle C. Lee. I wrote the lyrics produced by Fortune West Productions. It's on every streaming site. Title, Apple, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. It's on all of that. Um, I actually wrote it in 2017, but it just came out in November of 2023. It was a poem I wrote that Michelle turned into a song. So, yep. Thank you. Now, Britt. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Britt, we had a pen that we, we left in for you before we get into what we need to know. You told me about, you just said your service is your thing that makes you happiest. Yeah. You told me y'all had a very big iftar that was coming up where you service a lot of people. Let us know about that before we get into what else we need to know. And let's not leave out anything, Britt, this time. Oh, I'm not. So no, no, no. So um, so yeah. Well, we that actually was yesterday. That's why when you called me yesterday, when you sent me the text, I was like, oh my god, I know he's not asking it because I was like in the midst of running around. So yesterday was the day that we um we had a a, a major iftar that we do every year with my um like my older brother, um his name is Jalil Minkins. Um, uh, we service almost over like. I'm gonna say like over a thousand plus more people. Um, we we've been doing it every year. Bless. I'm him and a couple other brothers. You know what I mean? I just assist. I'm just his go-to person. You know what I'm saying? But it's him and like two or two or three other brothers that you know what I mean. Actually, um, you know, like put the money up and just you know bring the community Organize out. Organize the whole like situation. That. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, um, that's um that was actually yesterday that we do um. Every year, um, I actually have my podcast. Like I said, is um, we're actually on year three of Tribe Talk Tuesdays. And what does that look like for you? I'm um, healing. And what does that look like for you? It's me, and her name is Kiara. That's my co-host. That's my girl. Um, hopefully, I'm I'm hoping to throw an amazing another retreat. Um, the first one was that's part of. I guess that's going to be part of the story. Um, but um, hopefully, Taya, you could be a part of it. Maybe me, you could tap in together so we could do a retreat for our ladies. Yeah, um, yeah you know what I mean. That's one of my goals. Um, but yeah, so just being in service. Um, that's when I like I said, that's that's me. I like being in service. But do you practice self care? Um, you know I'm going to. I do. That. So my self, so my self care is I have a uh, self my morning routine. I haven't bought myself flowers lately, um, because that's something that I would do every week. That's part of like my self care. Um, I actually, you know what? So you know what? And to be truly honest, I have it in the last two months because it would be like a ritual, not not a ritual, but um, like my candles. Um, I would do yoni steam. I would do like um my affirmations while I'm you know doing uh dad or bath and i haven't bought my like i said i would buy myself flowers every week and i haven't been doing it um lately so i haven't been doing it for the last i'm gonna say like two months but i usually do but i think i'm gonna get your workbook though i think i'm gonna get your workbook because i think i maybe i need to practice more um self-care because i notice when i do lack or when i know i don't do my affirmations i know how it can affect me you know what I'm saying? Like I I do mm -hmm. know that. 
So, like, hence yesterday, like I said, when I was in the shower and I was like, oh, here you back on ABC. You know what I mean? Like, A ain't good enough again. Like, you ain't enough because you ain't get an A yet. <laughs> you ain't get an A plus. I, I was so like, oh, you know. You need to get over to Amazon. I'm telling you, like I said, I was like, oh, yeah, you, ch- all right, here we go. You, you back on this again. You know what I mean? I'm 37. You know what I'm saying? Like, I graduated in 05. Like, I was in Catholic school. You know what I mean? I, like, what? Fourth grade. You keep talking about something. Oh, you know, I was like, yeah. So I do notice that. So um, I'm glad that you mentioned it. I, I'm super grateful for that. But I do, I just, I do gratefuls every morning. Um, so I think maybe I need to do something that's extra because those are I, like I, I'm very ritual. I'm very ritual. Like every morning, I have something that's I call his name is Andre. I play it. It's gratitude. I do my gratitude, my gratitudes. I do my affirmations. Um, that's self care. Journal. I pray. I know it is, but yeah. It's, so so when I say it's ritual, but I think I need something more or something yeah. else added on to it. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I'm still, like I said, we, we in the shower or we talk about this A plus type thing. So it's, it needs more. I need more. You know what I mean? Or something different. So. Yeah, yeah. the whole thing about before anything else, the whole purpose, it means like when you wake up in the morning. Before you do anything for anybody, yeah. you do something yeah. for yourself. And if you start the day off like that, it makes a world. Because you know, I put I put me first. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. that everybody else is last. It just means right. that I'm first. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. care. No, I'm second, very first. third, and fourth because I'm damn sure. <laughs> no, I'm first. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. Anybody, no, no. read a message, anything. I do something, yeah. even if it's something small as playing a song that I like while I'm washing my face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All right, I'm ladies, I appreciate y'all coming on episode 135. 137 is coming up soon. And you should, <laughs> you should, we should have been 135 and 136. We could have went long. <laughs> I just told y'all I got something for y'all. Uh, before we wrap this one up, y'all, I appreciate y'all coming on. As y'all know, we recently just met both of y'all, but we've been on the phone several times since I met both of y'all. So, ladies, if you got whatever going on, you know that I'm there to support the situation. I appreciate Likewise. y'all coming on. That is on so yeah. We're working on the ladies' situation. <laughs> hey, get it together. I need a new bag. Right. What's going on? I know that's right. We are out. I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.